Do you need a quick read? Do you like fantasy? Do you like detective mysteries, specifically ones where the detective in question is a wizard? Well, you've come to the right place. The Dresden Files is the series for you. Written by author Jim Butcher, The Dresden Files is a series of many, many books that revolve around the life of one Harry Dresden. Harry is a private investigator that also happens to be a wizard, working in the city of Chicago. And as if the city didn't have enough problems, there are also supernatural forces in play, trying to do a bunch of evil shit. So you know how this goes. Urban fantasy is nothing groundbreaking at this point. There is the real world, and underneath, hidden in the shadows, is the supernatural. The fictional American city of Chicago is very well developed. There is so much fan art of it online that some might even believe the place actually exists. The city is filled with monsters and creatures, most of which you'll probably be familiar with. We've got vampires, trolls, fairies, werewolves, ghosts, demons and so on. And our hero has crossed paths with all of them. As the first book begins and you take your first steps into Chicago, you might notice a few things. It's a pretty standard, normal, run-of-the-mill urban fantasy. It's just a story about our hero helping out the cops with a murder that seems to have involved some dark magic. It was kind of predictable, but fun nonetheless. Every book is a new case for Harry, so there are hardly any cliffhangers, the book's almost working as standalones. Maybe you're like me, looking for a quick read, a palate cleanser in between big fantasy books. And yeah, Dresden Files will do that. But then something happens. With every new book, the world grows a little. You see a shadow of an underplot weaving itself through. Familiar characters make reappearances, and the picture becomes more clear. Before you know it, you find yourself in a world so complex and well-developed, it could rival some of the fantasy greats. It still mostly takes place in one city, but you'll get to learn more and more about all of its moving parts. The Fae Winter Court, and its counterpart, the Summer Court. The White Council of Wizards. The different vampire families, werewolf clans, as well as the less supernatural forces, such as the Chicago PD and the mob. All of them form a large, interconnected web of alliances, conspiracies and betrayals. The world is full of magic, so terrifying and unstable, held in place by conflicts involving beings with godlike powers, hanging in balance by a thread and able to collapse at any minute. So yeah, the stakes are high. But the books are short, at least in the beginning. It might take a while to get the bigger picture. So why even read the first few? Because of Harry. His personality bleeds through the pages. Everything in the books is influenced by it. On the downside, this means that if you don't like Harry, you might struggle with the books. But he seems like a real person. He has some glaring flaws, some of them people often call out, and he is conscious of them, and yet unable to change them so easily. He won't have a mind-blowing character arc in one book. But seeing him in the first book, as opposed to the last, you can see that he has made a big journey. Part of this is thanks to the passage of time in the books. While not exactly real time, it's close enough, and approximately 15 years have passed from the first book to the last published. So yeah, you'll notice character changes between 25-year-old Harry and the 40-year-old one. Watching him grow and mature through all of the ups and downs was exceptionally executed. Joining Harry on this journey is a colorful cast of quirky characters such as... Bob. A magic skull with thousands of years of culminated wizard knowledge inside of it, and a taste for sleazy erotica paperbacks. He is Harry's assistant slave, who helps him with spells, potions and stuff. Murphy. Harry's best friend and connection to the Chicago PD. One of the few people that seems to have her shit together in this world, and more often than not, Harry's voice of reason. Michael. A knight of the Holy Cross, the baddest of asses ever to live. Leah. Harry's fairy godmother, who has her own very secretive and very suspicious motives, helps Harry out from time to time, for a price. Toot Toot. A small fairy who occasionally scouts out the city and gathers info for Harry in exchange for pizza. Pops. A certain fan favorite broody dark and edgy fella that I can't talk too much about just now. You'll know him when you see him. But let's get back to Dresden for a moment. More specifically... One reason why we get to know Harry so well is because all the books are written in first person from his perspective. We know his every thought, so even when screaming at the page because he's about to do something incredibly stupid, we understand why he's doing it. The books are definitely a cozy read. You get to know and love the characters, Harry's rundown basement apartment and his somehow still functioning car. But don't be fooled, the series doesn't shy away from darker subjects or some deeper introspection, especially in the later books. Butcher takes a lot of inspiration from old detective noir stories, so that reflects on the characters as well. Our lead detective might have some outdated views on gender, but a lot of those tropes are turned on their heads throughout the series. For example, the mysterious woman that walked into Dresden's office, running from a dark past, might turn out to be an all-powerful eldritch being that only wanted to use him and his powers as a pawn in her games. So don't worry, Harry isn't James Bonding it in every book. In the end, Dresden is a good guy, always trying to do the right thing, if not always in the smartest way. 
Of course, we owe his magnetic personality, all of his humor, sarcasm and quirks to Jim Butcher. He wrote the guy. But another man brought him to life even further. Morning. Unlike most books, there is a right and wrong way to consume the Dresden Files. Audiobooks are the way to go here. James Marsters, aka Spike, no, he doesn't do the Buffy voice, is Harry Dresden. Most fans agree on this almost unanimously. His narration is so good and entwined into the DNA of the Dresden Files that when they switched narrators for book 13, due to Marsters scheduling conflicts, there was such a massive outcry from the fanbase that they eventually went back and recorded another version of the audiobook with Marsters. Bottom line, he's good, better than your inner reading voice. Give the audiobooks a try. This is the way. The main series consists of 17 books and you'll be fine reading just that and getting the whole picture. If you want more, however, do not fear. There are two collections of short stories, side jobs and briefcases, both containing about a dozen stories, some of which even give us perspectives other than Dresden's. There are also several graphic novels that you shouldn't ignore if you enjoy the books. Back in 2007, there was a TV adaptation that ran for one season, and while it's not bad, it's very loosely based on the books and takes a lot of liberties. You can take a look at it after you've consumed everything else and crave more Harry in your life. Paul Blackthorne's interpretation of Harry is interesting, so, that's it. Read it. Okay, Harry also has a fat grumpy cat and later on a massive dog. They're precious.